Glory to God. Are we ready for the teaching of God's word? Yes, sir. All right. So since last month into this month, and this teaching will conclude next week, we have been teaching about growth. We have been teaching about growth. And um, we're going to continue from there today. We're going to continue from there. Um, I think it's phenomenal teaching. I think it's a classic teaching. One of our pastors came to me after the first service. He said, Pastor, can you do us the favor of turning this to a book? This needs to stay with us, you know. And, um, you know, I mean, if that's what the Lord would want us to do, surely I will do that. Would you please turn your Bibles to Exodus chapter 23, verse 25. Exodus chapter 23 in verse 25. Exodus chapter 23, verse 25. So this is what the Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter 23, verse 25. It says this. <clears throat> I'm just waiting for you to get there. It says, and you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and bless your water. It says, I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Then verse 26 says that there shall nothing cast your young, nor be barren in the land. Take note of this, and I want to dwell on this quickly. How many of you have new business you've started up? Raise up your hands, please. Raise up your hands, please. All of you that started new business, I want to write out this verse and begin to use it to pray. What does it say? It says, nothing shall affect your young. Either it's a young business or it's a fortress in your womb. He said, nothing shall affect it. It doesn't matter the policy. It doesn't matter the economy. And the reason I'm saying so is that a lot of people pray, but when it comes to investing scripture into prayer, a lot of people don't do that. So if you have a tech startup, if you have a business startup, whatever startup you have, as you're praying, maybe it's going to trouble sometime, you say, Father, this is what your word says about my business. I'm speaking the word. Because the word of God contains life and power. You say, I'm speaking your word into this business. And this is what I'm saying. That nothing shall cast my young. That this business I've started. It's, an, it's a tech business. It's a fashion business. It's a real estate business. Nothing shall affect it. It doesn't matter the policy. It doesn't matter the contrary situation. I would always have a testimony. That's very important. He says, nothing shall cast their young, nor be barren in the land. The numbers of their days I will fulfill. Verse 27 says this. I will send my fear before thee, and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all the enemies turn their back unto you. I will send hornets before thee, which will drive out the Hivites, and the Canaanites, and the Hid Hidites from before thee. Now, verse 29 is where I want to zero in and I want to please pay attention. So, what the Bible is saying is very symbolic here. God is giving them a clear picture of expansion. God is giving them a clear a picture of increase. But verse 29, God says this. He says, I will drive them out before thee. I would not drive them out before thee in one year. And this is where the contradiction is. Have you ever been in a state in your life where you actually felt, and this is what you felt, that God said something to me, and the very thing God said to me is not happening. Have you ever felt that too before? No, you have to talk back to me. This is a talking church. No, this, uh, this church is a two-way church. I talk to you, you talk back to me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, they said hallelujah, but let me ask those people over here. Praise God. Hallelujah. At the back, praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, good, 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 good. So this is a question. Have you ever been at the point in your life where you feel as if God promised you something, God showed you something, God told you something, and the very thing that God has promised, showed, or told you did not come to pass? Yes. Good. And this is what we need to learn here. That, so God, was, God had promised them his word in a very specific manner. God says, I will do A, B, C, D, and F for you. Then verse 29, almost as if he was tricking them. He says, but guess what? I promise you all of these things. I promised you the marriage. I promise you that your annual income is going to rise to 250 million per annum. He says, but guess what? I will not drive them out before the one year. Meaning that although I promise that you'll be married, it will not happen in one year. Meaning that although I promised that your business was going to grow to half a billionaire annual income, 
It will not happen in one year. And you're wondering that this is frustrating. How can God promise me something and he tells me that this is going to take forever? He says, but let's keep reading. And this I wanted to see. He says, he says, I will not drive them from you within one year. Why? Lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field multiply against thee. God says, how will I drive them out? He says, by little by little, I will drive them out. So what determines? This is the question. If something determines the way the word of God would, would manifest in my life, what determines is that I cannot respond? God says, I will drive them out little by little. Why? Until you are increased. Why? See what I say. Until you are increased and you inherit that inherent land. Where, where shall, go, shall go come quickly? And we're going to watch this. God says, all of this I want to give to you. All of this I want to give to you. Just stay where you are now. Maybe you should move back three steps. And God says this. This is how I'm going to give the land to you. When you increase, take one step towards me, I give you one. Then when you increase again, I give you another. Then when you increase again, I give you another. Until you are able to fill the earth. What does this mean? That our personal growth and capacity will determine the manifestation of what God says to us. Oh, that's a great time to clap. Hallelujah. Um, our personal growth. So, I understand. Thank you, sir. So, I understand that God has said that I'm going to give you 200 million euro and come. That's wonderful. But God, the same God is saying to you, before I give you the 200 million euro annual income, I want to make sure you have the growth capacity to be able to handle what I'm giving you. And the reason is this, because new levels has new challenges. I'm telling you, if at the, let me tell you something, and this is, everybody's going to laugh. Ever look at me. I see people that run a business that does 5 million per annum, and they're stressed and overwhelmed. Question. If I'm your father, and 5 million is overwhelming you, will I give you 50 million? No. I won't. And God is saying this. This is what God is really saying to you. That because I don't want you stressed, because I don't want you overwhelmed, because I don't want that, what I want to do is that to make sure I can increase your capacity. So, there are people praying for things and God is saying that what you are praying for, I want you to grow into it. So, the first principle is this. Growth determines manifestation. That's the first principle. Growth determines what? Manifestation. God told them that all the things I said I would do in your life, by the time you start growing, you will enter into those things. Glory to God. But not only does growth determine manifestation, growth determines capacity. And capacity is essential for increase and enlargement. Can I have my chair? I wanted to watch this. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. This is good. Somebody say hallelujah. Oh wow. So this chair for illustration purpose is called capacity. Someone say capacity. That's weak. Someone say capacity. Good. So this is your current capacity, spiritual capacity. This is your current financial capacity. This is your current capacity. And what happens eventually is this. I wanted to watch something. What happened eventually is this. In your capacity. This is your capacity. God wants to bless you, so please come. So God sends his blessing. So my dear sister is blessing. God sends his blessing. And when the blessing comes, it's a full load blessing. It fills the capacity. But you are here, you still want more expansion when it comes to marriage. You still want more expansion when it comes to business, so you're still praying. And now God is sending more blessings. Can more blessings come? More blessings come. Yeah, yeah, more blessings come. And God is sending more blessings. When God sends more blessings, where will the blessings sit? The blessings will begin to struggle to fit into your life. And sometimes it's going to be that way. And the reason why is that there's no capacity. The first question, do you have capacity for what you're asking for? Do you have capacity? Everyone wants to be married. Do you have capacity to stay married? Everyone wants 200 million. Do you have the capacity to handle 200 million? 
Do you have the capacity? Everyone's, see, if the numbers of customers you have double, can you handle it? But that's what you're asking for. If the numbers of customers you have double, can you, if all your prayers are granted tomorrow, your life will be chaos if you're not careful. So, because God puts here a sense of blessing. In fact, it's so bad. Can you, can you just sit over there? It's so bad. It's so bad. You can see how this, the blessing is struggling. And it's so bad that oh, the angel say, okay, do you, and you see that? Then all of a sudden, the blessing begins to ruin you because the blessing is beyond the capacity. Should I give an example of something like that? The prodigal child. It was until he got blessing that he went mad. Have you not seen people that have small prosperity, they become crazy? But the thing is, there's no capacity. Small blessing, they become crazy. Some people will not be taking cocaine if they have money. Oh, wow. I just hit a button, praise God. Ah. It was the money they had that they met some people. Then all of a sudden, they do cocaine. There's no capacity. So this is what God does. Can you please stand up? Can you bring the chairs for me? This is what God does. When God begins to bless you, you know what he does? He begins, so when God wants to bless you, he begins to add what? Capacity. And this is tricky. You know why? Nobody sees the capacity because it's invisible. What everybody sees is blessing. So when you look at someone's life, you can say they are stagnant. Meanwhile, in reality, God is busy building capacity. But you don't see it. You will say, wow, they are stagnant. But in reality, God is busy what? Building capacity. <laughs> and some of you, you think that you are slow in life. And God says, don't be dumb. I'm building capacity. I'm building capacity. Your, your friend says you're behind. You're not behind. He's just building what? Capacity. Someone say, God is building capacity. And let me tell you a story in the Bible that will help you. When you look at the story of Joseph, you said Joseph was behind. No. God was building capacity. God was raising Joseph as a prophet. As a prophet, you will see some things and we hear some things that you should never see. But the problem is that Joseph did not have capacity to close him out. Everything Joseph sees in the gym, he will talk. So God was sent him to training school. Where was training school? Potiphar's house. When he got to Potiphar's house, the first thing they took away from him as a slave is freedom of speech. When you saw Joseph, you say he was stuck. God says, no, I'm building capacity. I'm building capacity. Guess what? God sent to Joseph's house. You know what happened? Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Everybody. By the time Joseph learned to listen to Potiphar's house, they moved him to the palace. Someone say, how did he learn to listen? Did you notice when Potiphar's wife accused Joseph of raping her, he said nothing. Why did he say nothing? He said, talking brought me here. I don't want to go back again. Let me just keep quiet. You did it, baby. You did it, baby. You did it, baby. You go to prison, baby. Why? When I talk, I went, I became a slave. If I talk again, I don't know where I will go to. When he passed, he went to prison. Many of you, you know the challenge? You are, you are running from training. You don't understand until you accept training, you can't get manifestation. You are running from training. You make one million now, you just spend it. You say, I don't know how I'm going to spend Let me tell you, there's nothing like that. It's indiscipline. Training is that you will see money in your account. You will see what you want to buy. And you say, I'm not buying. Training! Are you hearing me? Training. Training is this. I feel like sleeping. I get up to pray. Many of you have not passed training. That's why you're where you are. See, it was when Joseph passed training, he left Potiphar's house. When he left Potiphar's and let me tell you something. All the while, <laughs> Joseph, when he left Potiphar's house, let me take it easy. When he left Potiphar's house, the next thing happened. He went to prison and he was still going to learn something. What was God going to teach him? As a leader, even when you are in pain, you must come to lead people. So, when Joseph was in pain, falsely accused in prison, he was still checking, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? The reason why was that Joseph was going to become prime minister 
And it will not lead from a place of pain. It will lead from a place of vision. Some of you, once something doesn't happen in three months, you will fight God. You say, God, I'm angry with you. I'm not going to church again. Uh, he has not taken into prison yet. <laughs> That's why. All of us fought God now. We didn't, you didn't fight God? If you fought God before, raise up your hand. You say you backslide. Raise up your hand. Eh, me, I'm raising my hand for my hand. When we backslide, what happened? We came back. Didn't we come back again? Uh -huh. So it's your own turn backslide now. Uh, when you backslide, you're not front slide again. You're not saying, okay, 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 okay. I don't have anybody. Are, are, you, are you listening to me? Uh, you, you say, how can I be a tighter? And I lost all this money in business. I will stop tightening. When you are back to yourself, you come back again. <laughs> you, you are back. You will come back. You say, God, if you don't do it, prove that you are God. If you don't do it, I will not. You will threaten him. You say, don't worry. Well, you, don't, he's, um, he's, the Lord, he's the Alpha and Omega. You can't threaten him. Are you here, somebody? Yes, in the period when people saw Joseph, nothing happened on the outside. God was busy building was Joseph's capacity. He was doing it for Then all of a sudden, in one day, after capacity was built, the king remembered Joseph and all of the blessing. Go ahead. Do you know it was in this the same day? You, <laughs> can, can I get one more person? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know it was the same day that Joseph became the prime minister? He became married. He became rich. He got a house. It was, it was in the same day. Because when capacity is ready, it can accommodate every single thing. Oh, that's a good time to clap for Jesus. That's a good time to shout amen. But the problem is this. God is trying to build your capacity. <laughs> you keep running. You keep, God is saying, let's be, you keep, you're running from training. Keep running from training. See, if you are going to build capacity, you're going to submit yourself to training. This one, I, I can't pray in the morning. You have not yet submitted. Ah, you have not yet submitted. You will wake up and pray. Because training cannot be transferred. It must be done by yourself. You don't transfer muscles to people. No matter how much your gym instructor likes you, you can't give his muscles. You must, muscles are personally built. Muscles are what? Are personally built. Any small thing in the relationship, I would just save my mind and talk anyhow. You need training. By the time you go to three or four heartbreaks, you will not know how to talk. Your next boyfriend will say, wow, you talk so well. You say, I've been trained. Ah, I've been trained. I've been trained. <laughs> I've been trained. Uh, and the reason why you have been trained, see, because some people go through those breakup, but they were never trained. Because they don't adjust. They'll say, I've not found the right person. Meanwhile, you are need the adjustment. And that's why I tell people, express is not the best teacher. Evaluated express is the best teacher. You can explain something and be an idiot. That's why people make the same mistake several times. This is how you become wise. You experience something and you evaluate. And says, I see it, I'll not do it again. I know guys that keep choosing wrong people. I know girls that keep doing They are different people, though, but same DNA. Thank you. So one thing we see clearly is that number one, that growth determines capacity. That number two, growth determines manifestation. So, let's look at some key areas of growth. Number one, the spiritual life. Your spiritual, your spiritual growth. How do you want to grow this year? Do you have a goal to grow? There was a time that Pastor G came to see me. I mean, we're younger and we're just in the preliminary phase of ministry. And he came to see me three, four times in a row. Date back to day. And they just kept saying, he's not available. He's not available. He's not available. He says, praying. So, but, but the fourth, they eventually saw me. He said, ah. He said, Pastor B, I know you always pray. But this one, after I come in the morning, after and evening, and I see you are praying. I said, my brother, there are some things for the future. We want to settle in prayer. We are doing 10 hours prayer every day. He said, 10 hours? I said, that's it all. I just told young people to come and join prayer under 19 minutes. They will not join. They will go and watch a movie. Prayer is too much for 19 minutes, but movie is too short. Spiritual growth. You have been born again now five years. You have never had a complete Bible once. 
yet on Netflix, do you know how many series you have finished? Do you know you are not serious about your destiny? By default, I don't watch series. By default. Yeah? What makes me sit down for hours? Even the one I have to watch one movie, I have not tried. Once there's something in series, I just get up. I say, I'm not watching. Because once you start, that's the problem. The only series I watch in my life, One Tree Hill. Yeah. Once I finished watching that one, and I saw what it did to me, I, it affected my Bible study. It affected, I will not like, it affected my prayer time. I would just say, ah, let me just quickly watch and go and pray. Yeah. And you know, it's one, those times we used to be one MP3 CD like this. You just put it in, you just be going season one, season two. I said, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. At some point, I broke myself loose and I vowed. I said, nah. Glory to God. Areas of growth, spiritual growth, financial growth. I want to ask you a question. Sincere question. Sincere question. When will you make your first hundred million? Not that you sold the house. You didn't make it all. Because your agency is ten or five. That one is turned over. It's when will you make that this is now what I made at my first hundred million? See how the house of God is quiet. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But you want to be chilling with the big boy. <laughs> you want to be chilling with the big boy. <laughs> My brother, <laughs> you have to press. You just said, just, you know what? Two years from now, February, I make the f- this year, I make the first 20. Next year, I make the next 50. The, t- the next 30. The next year, I make the next 50. And once you set the goal, you say, what path will take me there? If 100 million is too big to you, when is the first 10 million coming in? I was telling them in the third service, <laughs> you need friends that will share testimony with you that will ruin you. I have a friend in Houston. He said, this is a problem, but this is why I can't live, you know, in some places. He was telling me about, um, I think he lives in Houston. He lives in Houston and works in Florida. He said, ah, in the morning... I just, no, 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 he lives in Florida, but works in Houston. He said, I like Florida, but my business is Houston. He said, I just carry my plane, fly my plane to Houston, and fly back. He said, when I couldn't fly, I had people that used, pilots that used to fly, but it was too much of money. He said, I'll just fly. <laughs> Yesterday, one of my pastor friends just said to me, he said, when will you give your first $1 million? Do you hear what I said? He didn't say, when will you make? He said, when will you give your first $1 million as an offering? Some of you have never even thought that such amount of money can be given. There are people beside you that give, I'm telling you, you'll be surprised. <laughs> I said, no, no, I'm planning on it. He said, don't plan on it. Tell me the date. It's not the money you arrange your one bullet. Wow. He said, I gave my first one million dollars at 2009. He said, this year, I've given 200 million. I called my wife. I said, are you hearing this? I could not sleep. I said, in this same ministry work, when is not that we're defrauding people? Are you hearing me? Stop making excuses for paralysis. Go forward. What is your spiritual goal? What is your financial goal? So the question is that when will your clients become 100? When will you make the first 1 million? When will you have 1 million sitting in your account like this? I said, that's it. When will you have 5 million sitting in your account like this? It's just be sitting there. When will you have your first $10,000 in your dumb account? Hey, it's true. Some of you don't know it's dumb account. It's a dumb account. And I'm telling you that you just need to grow. Because, listen to when you grow, what 1,000 naira is to you can become what 10 naira is to you in three months' time. Are you here? Yes, sir. 
Come on, people. Are you here? Let me tell you something. <laughs> if you attend this church, you should be grateful you do. You cannot come here for six months, something will not happen to you. If you do what I teach and do what I say, it's impossible. The reason why is that I know what I hear, I know what, and I know what I transfer. If you come and you just come and go, that, that's okay. But if you come here, I mean, you come, I'm telling you, it will, it will happen. Sam, come, come, come. Sam works for the largest marketing company in the whole of Africa. He was just appointed as a director. I'm not even sure he's up to 30. He said, in the history of the company, nobody's age and his experience has been appointed that. This is a deposit. You are not just learning Bible. Your mindset has been expanded to have a global kingdom mindset. Because I know what will change the world is not clapping hands. What will change the world is results. So, and the result is that if I even say I do this, I do this, people will not say he's a pastor. What does he really do? But by the time you do it, and your friends in London say, come on, what's going on here? Ah, what's going on here? What's going on here? And you say it's Jesus. They will bow down and listen to him. How do Babalawos get combat? People that receive results take people there. Have you seen my balance at that event? I say, come to the same for a bony work. No, they don't do adverts. Their adverts is change lives. So I'm, not, I'm saying some people that uh, I'm just coming. No, no, no. I'm not talking about people that just come on Sunday. No, no, no. I'm taking people that diligently follow, not listen, follow, and do. He joined as a student. Please, please. What do you call it? Um, Yelly, stand up. In the singles ministry, there's someone I don't want to mention his name. He told you, you and I this year. He said, all I've earned, all I've made, what did he say again? He said, all I made as income throughout last year. He said, in January alone, I've made it. And he was saying, he said, thank you, sir, for teaching and guiding me. Praise God. Let, I want to show you a message that someone sent me. And I don't want to mention names. Um, who is new in this church? You just joined within the last one month. I don't want someone that's someone that they, they know they say she read something that is planned. Who is new? Just joined the last one month. You know. I want someone that has a very strong voice. You have a strong voice. Do you have a strong voice, sir? Say amen. amen. No, no, the guy behind you. Huh? Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I can't see this at the back, so I can't tell, you know, because, you know, you, you knew? But I just want to, who should I call, Pastor? Who should I call? Let me just. Okay. Rashid, come. Yeah. He has a good voice. I'm just telling you how this thing works. So you will not know that these things are like, uh, God in judge. Read this message from the first of February. Yeah, yeah. Read it. All of us that you have raised in such a way, I feel grateful for you, sir. You have to slow down now because I need to be okay. All of us that you have raised, especially me, are truly grateful for you, sir. You haven't raised money, but you have raised men, and these men are grateful to God for you, sir. We want to blow our phone with our lets today, sir. Love you always, sir. Did he hear that? He said, all of us that you have raised are very grateful for you. Thank you. He said, you have not raised money, you have raised men. He said, on this occasion of February 1st, we want to blow your phone with our lets. I'm just, just said, it's not my birthday, it's not anything. Just like, ah, let's just blow. Valentine, I saw my billboard. <laughs> I said, how can a man be? I didn't even know who did it. I just said, thank you. How can a man be valid me? He said, I, 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 the, the, guy, the guy did five boards. I asked him, I said, what happened? I've never met him. Till tomorrow, I've not seen him before in my life. But how do you change people? And let me tell you something. If you don't serve in church, ultimately, I don't know how fulfilled you will be. You will become rich. That's not it. But fulfillment does not be, is not in what you become. Is what you make other people become. That's, that's the deep secret of fulfillment. Just imagine, 
And meanwhile, there are pastors screaming people, why bring money? Hey, bring money. Someone says, and the person says, you've not raised money, you've raised us. And that's why I say, if you can listen, glory to God. I said glory. And the reason why is that, see, when I teach the Bible, it takes me a lot of work. <laughs> you will not believe it that each sermon takes me about 24 hours. Because I know what I want to teach, I know what, I, but I'm trying to compress it, make you understand, because if you don't understand, you cannot do. So I'm looking for all the illustration, because I know if you get it, you would, I know you're not dumb. I know, but you don't get it. That's the point. It's not that it's not, someone said the Bible is not interesting. You, no, you just don't understand it yet. Have you seen Bible I'm reading to you now? One girl told me, he said, ah. He said, I never believe as a born Catholic I can come to a Pentecostal church. He said, when I heard you explain the Bible, I looked at my Bible. I said, is this the same Bible I've been reading? He said, it's as if my eyes opened. He said, I can't even say I've changed church yet, but only I've not been to my church in six months. He said, because every morning I wake up to go to my church, but my leg brings me here. Is that not your story? Is? Huh? Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. So, why are you growing? And I'm saying so because I'm saying this particular thing because I need you to not just hear, to apply. I need you to not just hear, to apply. You need to make adjustment because hearing does not change life. It's doing that change life. And you need to do instantly. What does it mean? There's a law called the law of diminishing returns. What does it mean? The law of diminishing, diminishing action means whatever you're meant to do, that you don't do it instantly, the likelihood of doing it begins to reduce. Glory to God. So you must learn how to, you must learn how to walk against that law. Do it fast. Do it now. Do it fast. Do it now. Praise God. I say hallelujah. All right. So let's keep going. So areas of, so we say spiritual growth, financial growth. What other kind of growth? Career and what? There's, some, there's something making noise there. Can you hear me with that? Spiritual growth, financial growth, business and career growth, and relationship growth. Areas of growth. Amen. My microphone has gone off on one side. It's, it's failing so spiritual growth, financial growth, career business growth, and relationship growth. Let's look at an example of someone that grew. Genesis chapter 26 verse 12. Let's look at someone. This is very powerful. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Uh, uh, that's so weak. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say I am growing. Hallelujah. I'm going to say what are you doing? You say I am growing. What are you doing? I am growing. What are you doing? I am growing. What are you doing? That's good. That's good. I'm happy. I am growing. What's happened to your finance? What's happened to your career? What's happened to your business? Say amen. amen. All right. So let's go. Genesis 26 verse 12. See what the Bible says. And I want to give an example of growth. And Isaac sold in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. At a level of growth, the Bible says, and the Lord did what? Blessed him. Wonderful. The next level, and the man waxed what? Uh -uh, read, let me hear you please. The man did what? One level, what happened? He was blessed. He moved forward, he waxed what? Great. He didn't stop there. The next level, what is this? It was great, but he went forward in greatness. Number three. Are you seeing levels of greatness? I know you are doing well, but you can do better. Yes. Yes, sir. Are you here, somebody? I know your career is doing well, but it can be better. I know your marriage is doing well, but it can be. Somebody say, it can be better. Yes. Say, I refuse to settle. Refuse to settle. As a businessman, refuse to settle. As a cell leader, as a Community leader, as a solar leader, as an HOD, as a teammate, refuse to settle. In the men's ministry, in the singles ministry, refuse to settle. 
He said the man was blessed. Then he walks great. Then he went forward. And the Bible says, after he went forward, the Bible says, he went forward and grew. Another level. He grew. Until what? Agoniatos. Agoniatos. Embakwata. Zihalokote. Embakoridish. Ekurima Suvar. That will be your story. Ah, I, I thought someone would receive I said, that will be your story. What is good will get better. What is better will get better. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Are you ready as we close this? So you know, growth is important. This is the question. This is not the question. This is not the question. Growth is very important. So how do I grow? Maybe before we answer the question, why do I grow? It says, why don't people grow? Why don't people grow? So, number one reason we don't grow is this. People assume growth is automatic. So, you, let me tell you something. In life, life does not promote you. <laughs> In life, there is no promotion. Growth is not automatic. So I did primary school exam. I went to primary two. But that's not life. Aging is compulsory. You will grow from 32 to 33. 40 to 45. Compulsory. But growth is not. Life gives you what you go for. Did you hear that? Life gives you what you go for. So if you went there and expect life to promote you, you will never be promoted. But if you go for it, life will give it to you. Are you hearing me? So why don't people grow? Assumption. Assumption that, you know, when will reach your first one million, you know, when it's time, I'm walking towards it. When will you be married? When it's time? Well, what can I do? I can't come and kill myself. After all, I want a soft life. You know, soft. Soft life. Soft life. Whatever will be, will be. If it is, I will do it. You know, whatever will be. Will be. Things, demonic things. How do you grow? Philippians chapter 3 verse 13. See what the Bible says. Where are my two men? Where are my two men? <laughs> Philippians 3 13. Look at this. <laughs> a- a- Apostle Paul. See, <laughs> you, know, you, you, you talk to some, you talk to some cell leaders. He say, how come your son is still five? They say, you know, you know, pastor, we're doing our best. Ah! How come the fifth is still this number? Ah! Take your destiny in your hands, sir. Paul was a minister. Paul said, this is how I grow. How did Paul grow? Look at it. Philippians 3.13. What did he say? He said, brethren, this is my secret. Paul said, hey, you want to know my secrets? This is it. He says, I do not count myself to have what? He says, I don't count myself to be fulfilled. (laughs) See, some people, you praise yourself too early. I'm telling you. Any small time you know, you make you buy a car. You say, I need a, you are not even fit for a bicycle. You, some of you, thank God for where you are. You, your, your, your annual income now is in 200 million. You say, oh, pastor, you know, I'm a, I'm a multi-millionaire. In what currency? Naira is not a global currency. Can we be humble? Convert your money to pounds, you'll be humble. You are not even a half millionaire in pounds. You say, you know, pastor, you know, for a girl my age, I've tried. Who said so? Who, where, where's the measurement? I'm not saying we're not thanking God for you, but I'm saying you can do better. And you can't compare yourself to yourself. You can't compare tortoise and antelope. That's the problem about comparing yourself to yourself. We all have different potentials. Paul says, it's not about my friends. It's the one thing I do. I can't know myself to have what apprehended. But this one thing I do, I what? I forget the things that what? Which are behind. And reach forward to what? He said, there's a goal in front of me. So what do I do? What do I do? Read now, read now in Jesus' name. I do what? Did you notice it is I walk towards it? He said, I press. That means it's difficult. Once you want the business to grow, you press. I call. Ah, we must break this hundred million barrier. We press. Are 
you pressing? Or you want it soft? You start your startup to get your first 10 clients. You walk on one for six months. You say, maybe God did not call me. What's God did not call me? My brother, you press. You, you press. You press. You press. You press. You press. If you have to move, you move, you move this thing. Ah. Are you here? Tell them, you know, Pastor, I want to go to oil and gas. I've been planning for three years. That's how you're planting eternity. <laughs> you think people in oil and gas will open the door for you? They say, hey, come and join us to make money. Is that how they will join you? They will lock the door. In the light, they should lock it and put mountain. We what? This. <laughs> ah! We press. You are trying to have a child. You prayed. Hey, I joined next level. I just prayed. I'm tired. Three months. Just three months. That's the problem. Microwave has fought you. I'm telling you. The computer has fought you. If you went to school, I went to school. And use four figure table. You know four figure table? You press. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Four figure table is pressing. They will give you figure. You will write it down there. Add. They say point this. You will look for it. You will add. You. It is tenacious. I don't know. You say that tan thirty is tan tan thirty tan 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 thirty horse. Any small problem in church? I'm, I'm tired of this church. Maybe sometimes you just go. You know. They say come and lead yourself. You know. Um. I want to lead a cell, but, you know, I, I'm not in that space in my life. You know, um, my skill sets, you know, and that thing, the things, my brother. Yes. You press. You press. You press. Can you get my phone? Put it in my pocket for me. You press. They say, let's pray in the morning. He said, yeah. I've been praying for a long time. You don't understand. We die here. There's only one way for you to go forward. Though. You know when um, either Tinubu was going to go a second term or it was going to hand over to Fashola, Obasanjo was determined that PDP would win Lagos. So Obasanjo came to Lagos for the how I many remember this? He came for the gubernatorial election. Tinumbu went to see him and said, Baba, I know you are here. You he won't be this win. He said, But PDP cannot win. I think it was AC that time. He said, AC will win. He said, This is Lagos. This is fire. Instead of PDP, will set Lagos on fire. These are the guys on the other side that determine though. But you want soft, soft life. Eh? Chilling with the big boys. You want to, bamba? You want to, bamba? Shakatika, shakatika, shakatika. <laughs> People that want it that way don't get it all. You pray so. Someone say, Pastor, you pray for 10 hours. My brother, do I have another job? If you see me pray, you think I'm a masquerade. I know what my job takes. Do you know what your own job takes? Everybody must pay the price. These politicians now, do you know where they enter to go and get power? You have pastors that will slay their mother and put on their tongue. I can't. This name of Jesus, I will die there. And it's nothing. I'm confused. You know, the, what confuses me the most about the generation? The word depressed. Any small thing, you are depressed. It seems as if it's slang, isn't it? I'm depressed. And this month I will leave my marriage. Leave the marriage. Girl. We press. Oh. You tell the girl, hey, what about dating? I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. The last two guys I dated, they just broke my heart. <laughs> press! 
doctor said, don't follow and trip. And so what? Our God does miracle. We press. What's fallopian tube? I think our God, if you don't follow, I have God gives brand new fallopian tube. BMW has spare parts for the cars they made. Our God has spare parts in heaven. He supplies it free of charge. Are you here, somebody? Someone says, I've been trying to start a business. I just need um, capital 500,000. He says, I've been working on it. You press her. I want our church to be a pressing church. I, I can't hear you. I say, I'm pressing. Ah, uh-huh. no, not the church. You just come and say, "Oh, single, single." Ah, you will go do it and come back and say, "Pastor, the Lord did it." That's what you will say. That is a culture of faith, the culture of possibilities. Where young people that will start start up, they say, "Pastor, we started the startup. There was nothing." He said, "But look at it. We just got the funding. This is the first five point eight million dollars." He said, "My brother, God, you are my son." His son that has resulted. Are you hearing me? We press. If you are here, you are not in a cell, you will get into a cell. If you have capacity, find a cell to lead. All them, the married men have, we even have cell for what do, senior management group, business funding. And when they get there, they, they are challenging you. This goes. This, this. They will say, you know, um, someone said, praise like just hit 250 million. And you are just doing 200,000. You just say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So you have a testimony. Say, I have a testimony, sir. What's the testimony? All is well. Praise God. Praise God. Praise all is well. What is well? My wife, my children, we're all well. That's my testimony. Because if I hang around with my future, I will soon be there. Are you here, somebody? Maybe this is your first time to come to this church, but there's a reason why you're hearing this. One guy, I mean, this guy testified, that young guy said he was, he, he became a director. One guy in our church, he's a, he's a partner now in one of this um, KPMG, one of this multinational, I don't want to mention the name. He said, Pastor, there's no way I should be a partner. He said, I know myself. I've not done the years. He said, how do you move? He said, the distance between where I am to partner is 15 years. I got it in three years. So, let them keep talking. Well, what? Press. Go press. Ah, but you can't be soft and press. Let me tell you the secret to life. On the outside, look soft. You know, as a girl, let them just, get, let them undermine you because you're speaking, you know, I'm John, I don't like that. You know, you know, <laughs> you know on the outside, you look polished, you look tush, you look soft. But inside, rugged. Ah! Ah! Inside, rugged. You know, <laughs> One time I went to the bank and I met the bank manager that attends NLP. He said, hey, pastor, when nobody, somebody sees on does not know you have prayer fire. I said, that's how we are. When you look at us, we look like ordinary men. But when we enter ring, you know ring? Boxing ring. <laughs> then you see fire. Thank you. Are we ready to close? So the two reasons why people don't grow, number one, assumption that will grow automatically. Number two is this, growth will be easy. No. Growth happens outside comfort zones. Growth is never easy. That's why some of you here, before this year is over, you must make up your mind, I will take on leadership in church. I must be a cell leader. After this meeting, you'll go for the class. There's a class after this meeting. You'll go and say, train me. Why? You don't grow by theory, you grow by practical. (laughs) <laughs> nobody see I can't teach you to grow you, you know can you go to the gym and it says that this, this is how you grow 10 reps um, 2 squats 25 squats and um, back branch 25 and when you say you just say okay back branch 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 you're counting no you don't grow by counting you remove your shirt change you start the squat so growth is by what? practical after the service please what can I join? what can I lead? Because until I go through training, I can't get a location. Tomorrow now, there's prayer for advancement. If you have to be here, physically be here. If you want to join online, join online. Commando Karioska. Praise the Lord. All right, let's begin to close. 
So how do you grow? The first thing, <laughs> can I show you scripture? You, I love fourth service eh? because things I've never seen myself, I will just tell you. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 24. This, I, I, this scripture, I never said in any service. This is how people grow. Proverbs 30 verse 24. Proverbs 30, not 13. 30. Yeah, as you're talking, you have Igbo assets. We can remove it. It's part of growth because there are some places you will enter where your accents will affect you. Instead of you say champion, you say yampion. And, and they wonder what yam, yam, yam. I say, no, no, I'm saying yampion now. I'm a yampion, you know. And you say, no, 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 okay. I'm not saying I'm a champion, you know, I'm a champion. <laughs> Let me tell you something about growth. Everybody look up here. Very powerful. Everything you need to grow, you don't have. Like, you don't have in its full manifestation. You have in a seed form. You need to nurture it. You need some skills that you don't have in its manifestation. But the good thing that all those skills are learnable. There's some basic skills you have. How to market. How to talk. How to lead. How to have effective meetings. How to negotiate. But those skills are learnable. Why are you not learning them? The only reason why you're not learning that is because out of your, it's what? Out of your comfort zone. See what the Bible says. It says, there be these four things that are little upon the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. Look, read it. Next line. The ants are not a, are not a, the ant are a people, not strong. Yet they what? Did you notice something? The ant knows that when winter comes, I would not be able to pay my food because I'm not strong. It will kill me. So in summer, they intentionally gather their food. Do you know how small ant is? Do you see their brain? Not up to your finger. Yet you are looking for house rent. The ants know that house rent is coming. Winter is coming. So before the date of house rent, they gather. So when people tell me, Pastor, tomorrow they will send me out. I'm like, why did you wait up to today? The exceptional cases, I'm not saying that. And to see their brain, oh. So you see ants. They'll be carrying food. They'll carry Because they know that a time is coming. See what the Bible says. The ants are not a strong people. Yet, they prepare their meat in summer. I wish I can go down, but I don't have the time. That is what I call intentional growth. I prepare before it. There are two kinds of growth. Intentional growth and accidental growth. What's the difference? Intentional growth lends before mistakes. Accidental growth lends for mistake. Intentional growth what? Lends what? Oh yeah. Accidental growth lends for what? <laughs> What's wrong? I'm a love pastor. I'm a love pastor. What book have you read about choosing a lover? None. Don't worry. We'll use you as a lesson. Because intentional growth knows before I love him, I fall in love. Let me read something. Are there not parents here that are having children and I've never read one book on parenting? Not one book on parenting. Accidental parents. Intentional growth learns before what? Mistakes. I learned that once it learns, it learns from mistakes. The second one is this. Accidental growth stops learning. Intentional growth keeps learning. There are people that since they left university, they've not read one book completely. You know why we read? Because we know that areas we need to grow. Accidental growth doesn't learn. Doesn't learn. I was telling them in the other service, I said between last week and this week, maybe about eight or nine days, I brought about maybe five, five to eight books. I've read about three of them. I create time to read. Because it's reading that grows me. The best work you can do, see, the most quality work in this life is thinking. I hope you know that. The more you think, the more you are paid. The more your work involves critical thinking, the more you are paid. The less your work involves critical thinking, the less you are paid. 
And what improves your thinking is information. And if you don't think, you'll not be paid much. Prasu menea to us. Thinking, thinking, thinking. So intentional God is always learning, learning. And I said, it, it's always learning. So uh, someone told me something. He said, oh, I, I did crypto. I, I, as one guy was broke, I said, oh, why not do crypto? He said, I've done a lot of money. I said, who thought you? He said, I lent online. I said, why did you lose the money? I said, online. I said, you lent where you lost it now. They taught you to lose it, so you lent it that way. You want to grow? You need to keep learning. The third thing is about accidental, accidental, talk, accidental growth. Talks big and doesn't follow through. This time next year, I'll be married. This time next year, I will have my own this. Big talk. Doesn't follow through. That's why, you know, I'm a pastor. I hear this all the time. People, they think they're impressing me. Pastor, I just came to let you know by faith. By faith. If you like, point at me and stir your face. It doesn't mean you have more faith. You can look more like a rock. It doesn't mean you have faith. See, by faith. Uh, because I know you will not follow through. But you are different. You will follow through. Intentional growth follows through. So how do you grow? Number one, define the area you want to grow. Number two, define how you want to grow. Number three, define when you want to grow. When you want to start, which is now. What else do you need to grow? Review. Pause and review. The law of reflection. The law of what? The law of what? Can I, stay, can I, can I have one more minute right now? Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the key things that helps you grow in life is reflection. So pause and just look back. How did I get it right? How did I get it wrong? What did I learn? What did I not learn? Where did I make the most money? Where did I lose the most money? Whose advice helped me the most? Whose advice did not help me? How did this work? How did it not work? How did I get here? Just to pause and reflect. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Some of you will be surprised that the answer you are looking for has a pattern in your past. You just be surprised. Every time I meet people and what they call it, I'm so excited and I start dating them more than one month, we normally break up. Oh, wow. Now I know. Business, every time I meet a family member that makes sense to a business and puts under pressure, I always lose the money. Now I know. Like me, now I notice. All my friends have borrowed money for me to return it. So I, it was a pattern I noticed. So I reflected and I said, I don't borrow them what? Money. That's it. So when they come, I can even say I borrow them, but in my mind I give them. But the right answer I borrow them, I said they'll not come back again. So when they come back, I say, but you see, oh, me, oh, that's true. But in my mind I've given them. Reflection. Do you pause and reflect? And without reflection, you cannot grow. You'll be going around in a circle. That's why some people go around. Some people make the same mis business mistake one million ways. Different ways, though. The same mistake. The same mistake. They make the same maritime mistake one million ways. The same mistake. The same mistake. Because they just choose not to what? Reflect. Let's pray.